Good day everyone and welcome to our school at home in English 5. We are in the third quarter set of lessons and I hope you still enjoy the class as we move to lesson number 6. In this lesson, you are expected to summarize a poem in terms of its elements, such as rhymes, sound devices, imagery, and figurative language. For a start, do this exercise. You can pause this video if you will need more time. Press play again when you are finished and ready to proceed with the lesson. So now, read the poem with me and analyze it carefully. Give the summary of this poem based on its elements. My Big Fat Cat by Christian M. Michewo I own a big fat cat, the fattest for miles around. Wherever there's lots of food, that's where he'll be found. He's really good at eating. It's a talent, I suppose. I'm sure if he gets at it, he'd win the talent shows. I own a big fat cat. He weighs a piece of ton. He couldn't run to save his life. Yes, he isn't much fun. His favorite room is the kitchen. I'm sure we all know why. He eats just about everything, so that's why he's a child. I'd like to tell you, teacher. I'd like to tell you straight. I might have accidentally dropped my homework in his place. Were you able to get the elements of this one? Analyze it closely. So here's the answer to the poem that you have just read and analyzed. The poem is about a fat cat that never gets tired of eating, which the frown are around sound and plays straight. For imagery, big fat cat appears to the sense of sight. Words fat and cat represent assonance. Lines such as fattest for miles around and weighs at least a ton are both examples of hyperbole. Form, as we have learned before, is a piece of writing in which the words are chosen for their beauty and sound. They are carefully arranged, usually in short lines that rhyme. Aside from having rhyming words, Poem also uses flowery words to convey meaning and communicate ideas, feelings, sounds, gestures, and images. Imagine how life would be without poetry. Not all people seem to recognize how poetry has affected our lives in various ways. Poetry allows us to better understand how language and symbols work creatively with one another. Poems have elements that make them easily appreciated by the reader. These elements consist of rhymes, sound devices, imagery, and figurative language. Each of these elements contributes in expressing the author's idea about his or her fear. Today, we will talk about these things as we summarize the poem in terms of its elements. Rhyme is a popular literary device in which the repetition of the same or similar sounds occurs in two or more words usually at the end of lines in poems or songs. Let us take these examples. I have to wonder a lot like thunder. What do you notice with the words wonder and thunder? Do these words rhyme? Yes, they do. 
What about dogs at night? Sky will bright. Night and bright are obviously rhyming words. Sound devices are special tools the poet can use to create certain effects in the poem to convey and reinforce meaning through sound. These sound devices are assonance, alliteration, and onomatopoeia. Assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds in the same line. For example, cool shade and tender rain. Both shade and rain have the same long vowel sounds. Another example can be the rain in snow falls. Vowel letters AI in rain and snow have common sounds. So that's all for assonance. Alliteration is another sound device which is the repetition of consonant sounds in the same line like Christmas carol and heaven's harmony. The words Christmas and carol are placed side by side and they both begin with hard C. This means with heaven's harmony which both begin with H. Another example is Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. If you notice, the little sounds of each word are the same. That's all for alliteration. Next is onomatopoeia. It refers to the words which imitate the natural sounds of the sense. Examples are buzzing of bees, whistling of cattle. Bees produce the buzz while cattle whistle. Words like mee, boing, slash, leaf, and quack produce sounds that are imitated from animals and things. These are other examples of onomatopoeia. It's your turn to read them. That's great! So that's everything about onomatopoeia. Aside from words that rhyme and sound devices, you need to identify also the details such as the words that appeal to the senses or the imagery and figurative languages in order to summarize the poem in terms of its elements. Imagery is the use of particular words that create mental pictures appealing to the physical senses, such as the sight for seeing, auditory for hearing, or tactile for smell, gustatory for taste, and tactile for touch. Example is trees of the frozen forest. This line appears to the sense of smell because of the word fragrance. Another example is sweet candy for love to buy. This line appears to your front face because of the word sweet. So that's all for imagery. Now let's proceed to figurative language. It refers to the physical script used to creatively express feelings and ideas. Number one is scenery which uses us and like to compare. For example, she is like an angel. She is compared to an angel with the use of the word like. Another example can be a sweet as honey and like a python rabbit. These lines use the word as and like to compare. Next is metaphor. It does the comparison directly. And like simile, metaphor does not use us or like to compare. For example, she is an angel. She is compared to an angel without the use of us or like. Another figurative language is 
certain situation. It is when an idea, thing, or animal is given name and attribute. For example, lightning dance across the sky. The movement of the lightning is compared to a person who dances swiftly. Another is, the brittle wind bullied the tree into giving up its awesome lives. The wind is compared to a person who bullied someone using his power. It's hyperbole. It is an exaggerated statement which is not meant to be taken literally. For example, I have a million things to do. Having a lot of work to do is exaggeratedly compared to million things. Next is, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Due to hunger, a person may exaggeratedly say, I could eat a horse. Another example is, she cried so long that she made a lake. The exaggerated line here is, she made a lake. This time, let me see if you are ready to summarize this poem in terms of its elements. Read the poem with me. Home Alone by Inorenko My family is gone. There's no one home. It's only me who's home alone. I couldn't hear a single squeak. There shouldn't even be a clip. So what's that something that I hear? It must mean one thing. Death is near. You're an adult. You'll be just fine. I tell myself as I dial your name. Let's get a knock upon the door. My heart beats faster than before. I know it's closed. I've checked the lock.
hỏi từ đó mình đọc Hyperbole, I would call it a meaning to the phone Goodbye and see you in the next lesson.